1775, the Continental Congress created a unified army. Our army manned the air. It ran the ramparts. It took over the airports. It did everything it had to do. So the pages of history are littered with a spectacular collection of losers. Take the 1976 Tampa Bay Buccaneers, whose offense was so inept that when a reporter asked head coach John McKay what he thought of his team's execution, he replied, I'm all for it. Or General George Custer, who thought it wise to lead 210 overly ambitious cavalry members into combat against 3,500 Lakota and Cheyenne warriors, creating 210 widows in under an hour. Or this dysfunctional dancer, whose synchronized spasms and choreographed cramps earned her the lowest score in Olympic history. Zero point zero. And all but sealed the sports fate in the 2028 games. But all of these losers pale in comparison to the king of losing, Donald Trump, who seems poised to snatch defeat from the jaws of victory in the 2024 election thanks to the dynamic duo of Kamala Harris and Tim Walls. And with his poll numbers dropping faster than J.D. Vance's zipper at an Ashley Furniture, Trump's loyal allies like Marco and Ted and Lindsey and Glitch McConnell have been forced to hold press conferences like this one in his support. That's right. Have you noticed they're nowhere to be found? Because they know a sinking ship when they see it. Actually, some Republicans are speaking out in support of Harris and Walls. Take Republican John Giles, who recently spoke at the sold-out Harris-Walls rally in Arizona and said the things the GOP admits in private but is too gutless to admit in public. The Republican Party has been taken over by extremists that are committed to forcing people in the center of the political spectrum out of the party. I I have something to say to those of us who are in the political middle. You don't owe a damn thing to that political party. You do not owe anything to a party that is out of touch and is hell-bent on taking our country backward. And by all means, you owe no displaced loyalty to a candidate that is morally and ethically bankrupt. That's why I'm voting for Kamala Harris and Tim Walz. Giles is the mayor of Mesa, Arizona, home to over half a million people, many of them snowbirds who appear like clockwork every fall at the first sign of frost, then magically disappear around Easter when the pickleball courts get hot enough to melt their Velcro sketchers. How do I know this? I'm a bit of an expert on Arizona. You see, I grew up there as a kid and was proud to call Mesa my home for over 40 years. And despite it getting a bad rap as of late, it's really a great place to live. They have a diverse culture, great food, and wonderful weather. Oh, and voted for Biden in 2020. So as his panic sets in, MAGA's earless leader has taken to the fact-check-free confines of his rallies and resort slash wax museum to spread his propaganda. Not that he needs fact-checking because, you know. He never lied to the American people. Um, He always told us the truth. And and he was the first president to ever be honest. Well, figurative t-shirt lady, let's put your words to the test and see just how long the portly prevaricator can stick to the truth. Thank you very much. Appreciate your being here. Uh, Just a statement before I talk about debates. I think that our country is right now in the most dangerous position it's ever been in from an economic standpoint. Wow, 20 seconds. That might be his personal best, but... It's a lot. Just last year, the world's biggest economy, the U.S., among others, was at risk of recession. Today, though, its GDP is growing faster than expected. Stocks are soaring and the job market is hot. The American economy is not just strong, it's also powered ahead of the European Union, the U.K., Japan and other advanced economies. And as his desperation increases, so does the absurdity of his lies, which have gone from comical to downright demented. I have 10 times, 20 times, 30 times the crowd size, and no, they never say the crowd was big. While the former president is claiming the Harris campaign lied about the size of the crowd at a recent campaign rally, Trump said this image posted by a Michigan campaign staffer for Harris of a large crowd at an August 7th rally in Detroit was created by AI that claim is false. 
Yes, Trump's an expert on AI photos. In fact, he can count on all 12 fingers the number of times he's reposted them on his social media pages. Like this one of him praying to St. Falange, the patron saint of extraneous appendages. Or take this photo of a loyal supporter collecting signatures to make Argon great again, who appears to be a couple of clipboards short for his three-armed companion. Or this smiling group of supporters enthralled with just being in the presence of Aquaman including this poor fella who's so afraid of commitment, he actually chopped off his ring finger. Speaking of missing body parts, how's that ear doing? Pretty, uh, pretty much recovered, yeah. I'm a fast healer. It's a hell of a shot. Mm, he could have been better. You were saying? Prisons are being emptied out into our country because we have a president that's the worst president in the history of our country. This week, scholars weighed in with their latest survey ranking all 45 American presidents. And Donald Trump rated dead last at 45. <laughs> so now that he has a new opponent, Trump's done his homework and made some remarkably astute observations. Uh, she's a woman. Yes, and a prosecutor. And we know that scares the hell out of you. She represents certain groups of people. Yes, like women and men and Democrats and independents and non-cult Republicans and people who care about civil rights and climate change and women's reproductive rights and democracy. You know, those people. I think she'll be much less. I, and I see it right now. I see her going way down to the polls now. We go from some red on this side of the screen. Look at all this blue on this side of the screen. Pennsylvania, Harris by four. Wisconsin, Harris by four. Michigan, Harris by four. So you're seeing those comments on Trump on social media kind of going bananas. And you're wondering why. It's because he's looking at polling data like this, which shows clear momentum from Donald Trump to Kamala Harris. Of course there'll be a peaceful transfer, and there was last time. You know, I was doing very well with black voters, and I still am. <laughs> uh, it's possible that I won't do as well with black women. Gee, I wonder why. Do you want this to bring in Robert Mueller? What a stupid question that is. What a stupid question. But I watch you a lot. You ask a lot of stupid questions. That means we have Kamala. She's so bad. She's so pathetic. It's so amazing. It's just so bad. So. I wouldn't worry about it, Donnie. I mean, women probably won't even vote. But how are you going to take care of us lower income Americans? I'm also doing no tax on tips. Now you're talking something for us everyday people. No tax on tips. So waiters, waitresses, caddies. Uh caddies? Like this guy? Oh, of course. Because I don't know about you, but I can't tell you how many times me and my pals have shelled out 1200 bucks to golf for four hours, only to wonder if my poor caddy, who averages around 40 grand a year, is going to get taxed on my $200 cash tip. Man of the people. I keep playing. I don't think the heavy stuff's going to come down for quite a while. For years, I wondered, why are they allowing these people to come in at levels like this? It was incredible. Former President Trump has indicated to senators that uh, he does not want us to solve the problem at the border. Uh, he wants to lay the blame for the border at Biden. You sit on a throne of lies. The Federal Reserve is a very interesting thing, and it's sort of gotten it wrong a lot. In my case, I made a lot of money. I was very successful, and I think I have a better instinct than... In many cases, people that would be on the Federal Reserve or the chairman. Have you lost your mind? Trump's businesses didn't file for bankruptcy four times. They've technically filed for bankruptcy six times. So for the next three months, we've got a lot of work ahead of us. We need to keep this momentum going. Do not let up. Be diligent and call out every single one of Trump and his MAGA lies. Report Trump's lies as lies. And vote early and often, and get all those illegals registered. If we do that, we could wake up on November 6th and this eight-year national nightmare and embarrassment could finally be over. Let Trump and MAGA know we, the people, are pissed. We want our flag and our freedoms and our rights and our country back. And Kamala needs to be especially careful with this upcoming debate, because in case you didn't know... Uh, I'm a very intelligent person. It took over the airports. <laughs> Yeah.